Well, welcome everybody to this first episode of a brand new podcast, which brings to you the expert Bonnie Serratore. She's a master tracker, master healer, master shaman, master of all sorts of things. And today's podcast, we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be talking about uh, spiritual topics throughout this podcast. All sorts of spiritual topics, including past life healing. Uh, how to heal trauma, maybe we'll get in some ETs. And we're definitely going to do some dark topics as well, because I think it's really important that we get into some of the darker themes in in spirituality, because people aren't really aware of it. A lot of people don't really talk about it. I think partly because of fear and maybe because of ignorance as well. Um, So we're not going to shy away from that. And Bonnie is an expert at clearing dark influences. And the format for the podcast will probably be me asking questions uh, mostly, and I'll contribute where I can. So hopefully it'll be conversational and I hope, I just hope everybody has fun. So today's topic is going to be on curses because Halloween's just around the corner and this should be a pretty fun topic. And Bonnie, before we get into the actual topic, do you want to add anything to the intro for our first episode? I think it's just going to be very informative. Like you were saying, Cynthia, a lot of people shy away from or they don't have any awareness of dark forces. So our work is a very inclusive of many things. And by bringing awareness, it allows people to have a better understanding of what actually might be affecting their lives. In my experience, these kinds of interferences are very potent and they affect people's mental well-being, your physical, your emotional you can be affected in every facet of your life. But you know, if we continue to believe that mainstream consciousness and mainstream modalities are gonna help us, then we're lost because they don't and they cannot. So this is very alternative and very potent and it does work, a very powerful healing kind of modality. Right, and very briefly, I just want to share that when I found your work, it changed things so much. And I've been on a healing path for about 10 years and I've only known your work for less than a year and you've healed me more than a few in a few months than all those years combined. Like that's, that's how, uh, that's how amazing you are. And so it's really exciting to bring a lot of these topics out uh, to, so that other people could benefit from your work as well. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. What, what exactly are curses, Bonnie? Okay. Curses. (laughs) They can be very potent and powerful. Okay. So there's a lot of information about curses. I'm gonna start with just things that happen in our life right now. So there's very simple things that people do. Like for example, I think everyone can relate to this. Driving down the road, someone uh, cuts you off and you flip them off or you have something (laughs) negative to say about them or you say you wish bad on them. That is actually a curse. And it can actually have potency and be powerful, okay? You, people need to understand this. We are very potent, powerful beings. And when we're putting emotion behind something, it becomes even more potent. So those are very simple kinds of curses. Then we go into more where people are actually intentionally call, doing a curse. Like, let's just say that, um, you know, someone ha- has an issue with a neighbor or something. And they have the ability that maybe they've been playing with some of the ruins or maybe uh, black magic or voodoo, sorcery, witchcraft, but they can, they can literally conjure and create a curse for someone with intention. When that happens, those curses do not get lifted just because a person dies. This is why for me, curses are pretty, uh, pretty important to be aware of and to understand how potent they can be. So sometimes I've actually worked with people that have family curses. That means that a curse was created and cast upon somebody, maybe a lifetime ago, maybe 10 lifetimes ago, maybe somewhere in your your bloodline, somewhere back in the bloodline, someone was cursed, someone cursed your family and they made it a family curse, not just an individual curse. The issue with those things is Those curses continue, they don't end, they don't stop until they get unraveled or cleared. And if it's a family curse, depending on what that is, the family as people live and die, live and die, and new people are born and the family continues, 
they're still being cursed by that particular energy frequency that was cast upon the family. Now, curses can be anything. Mostly curses are more negative. They want to stop somebody, block somebody, cause harm to somebody, mess somebody's life up. You know, it's like an anger thing or it can be a jealousy thing. It can be a revenge thing. But all the emotions that we have, we, when we get upset with somebody, we get mad at somebody and then we have ill wishes. We want to hurt them. We want them to suffer in some way, to have some kind of discomfort in their life and the world. And, and again, there's a lot of emotion involved. So there's a lot of different potency, a lot of different ways that they can happen. Again, we do have people that can do black magic, that can do voodoo, that can do uh, witchcraft, like the dark witchcraft, sorcery, wizardry. Then there's sa satanic Satanism. All of these modalities can create, uh, people using these modalities can actually create curses, cast curses onto to people. And to unravel a curse, we can do it. If you know that you've got a curse on you, if you have a sense of how to work with energy, well, you can actually unravel it yourself. But most people can't do that. Bonnie, could you, before you get into that, could you give us some clear signs if somebody felt like they might be cursed? What are some, maybe two or three very clear signs that if mm -hmm. these things were happening in your life, that you probably have a curse, like a, like an actual potent one that was intentionally maybe through like a ritual or something because mm -hmm. i'm assuming those are more powerful than oh yeah if right okay so how would those people are, know yeah those are very powerful okay so oftentimes some people just have a sense of something's off some people like i've had a lot of people actually say you know i feel like there's a curse on me and they're right okay so things that red flags will let you know there's a curse when you are living your life and if it's a new curse, then things may start to change where all of a sudden life was flowing in a certain direction. Let's just say maybe with work, making money, have, receiving money. And then all of a sudden things start to go awry and you're not able to hold a job or there's the, something changes with your finances and things just continue to go downhill. You know, you kind, kind of feel like a spiraling of downhill. And then also health issues. You can have all of a sudden, you know, like an onset of something can begin to happen where maybe all of a sudden you're feeling like, whoa, my lungs, I can't take full breaths in my lungs. Or now you find yourself having some kind of disease like diabetes or high blood pressure. And it isn't because of what you're eating uh, or what you're not doing with your health wise. Okay. It's like somehow it's like all of a sudden it happens. Now, these would be curses that are happening in this lifetime that have happened more recently. So now when we start looking at curses that, that happened maybe earlier in your life stream and you're carrying them over, you're gonna find that certain aspects of your life that seems like no matter what you do, no matter how much healing you have done, no matter you know, the kinds of modalities of healing that you have done, something isn't changing in your life, something that you want to change where you're, you're coming up against the wall, where your life isn't open and smooth, um, even your heart issue, like the ability to receive. So what also happens, Cynthia, is we can actually feel energy. So every, you know, the truth is, if the people are attuned to their own selves, the body's always talking to us, always. And if we have a curse, we can actually feel some of those sensations in the physical body. So for example, let's just say that someone has cursed you that they don't want you to have love, okay? You know, so, so here you are, you, you know, in your life, you, this, let's just say this is past life. You, you come into the world and you're growing up and then you start getting involved, having relationships, but no matter what, even people that seemingly love you, like you, they go away or they just kind of fall away or disappear. And no matter what you do, you just can't have love. It just never holds. It doesn't stick. That would be a red flag that there's a curse on you. Okay, absolutely. So I have so, a question. It's okay. Yeah. I have a question about what what if someone just has a, a really ingrained negative belief about a particular thing, and that keeps coming around, and it's not really a curse. It's just a negative belief. Could you tell the difference? Is that 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, the current, okay. So the negativity is also going to have an emotional reaction. Okay. So if we're like someone who's really negative and always finding fault, judging the poor me, the, the victim, there's always going to be some kind of sensation in the body. Okay. So you're going to be feeling an unconscious act activation, so to speak. So okay. in the negative, in the net, in that negativity, we're going to have you know, like we'll feel a charge or a zing or a grab or something physical in the body. Okay. It'll be an emotional and physical. Now a curse, we, we're, we're not going to feel a grab because it's a curse. It's a block. It's an interference. And sometimes I've seen curses literally like a blank, like a cloak or a blanket can be over somebody and it blocks all facets of their life their ability to sense energy, their ability to connect, uh, their ability to make money, the health issues. So these are really strong, violent curses, intense curses, powerful curses that can really affect the well-being of someone. And sometimes the curse will be specific, you know, specifically for, okay, I'm gonna make sure you never have love. We're gonna make sure you never have health. Your body's gonna deteriorate. You're gonna have diseases or illnesses something to cause you to suffer, okay? And all of those two, again, when it's us, when we're coming from a place that's the, the subconscious beliefs, our beliefs, there's always gonna be that zingy charge in the body, no matter what, okay? Now with curses, again, you're not gonna get that same kind of visceral or that same kind of frequency in your physical form. You're just gonna be confused and you might have fear and anxiety. You might stress over like your thoughts will create energies in the body. Um, but when you're looking at your life, like let's just say, for example, we're dealing with someone who's been cursed about not being able to ever have love. Okay. Like have a loving, um, full, full on loving, committed relationship. So we we're got the emotional component of that is going to be, you know, the feelings that come up from that. But the actual frequency of the curse, whereas we're saying, okay, I'm cursing you, you will not have love, you will never know love, okay, so I'm cursing that I'm blocking you from knowing and having love, okay, so when you are in your life, and you're trying to have experiences, it'll be the, the thoughts and the desires, and the wanting that will cause an emotional reaction in the body, and when you're more in a state of neutrality, or just feeling into Yes, I, I want, I, I'm going to have, or I, I want to have love. And what will happen is you're going to feel and sense something is not all right. Something like, again, I'm telling you, your body talks to you. So you're, what you're going to experience may be more of a, just like more of a sensing that, oh, something's here. Something is in the way. And it's not that emotional, intense feeling that we get. It's more of a, a questioning and a sensing of an interference, okay? Because it does have an actual energy frequency to it. Curses have energy as everything does. It's emotion. That emotion is whacking somebody and literally surrounding them, or maybe it's in a particular area of the body, like maybe right in the heart chakra, or maybe it could be in that second chakra. They could be messing you up like never to be able to have intimacy, like no one's ever going to want to have sex with you. You know what I mean? It could be anything. Yeah. So yeah, anything could is possible with these curses. And, but, but the key though, is when we're, it's more, again, I, it's hard to explain, but there is a difference. So if I'm in, like, I'm looking for a relationship, I want relationship is not happening. So I might feel, start to feel sadness around it. That's my emotion. Okay. Mm -hmm. I might, I might feel disappointment. I might feel, or I might have thoughts like, wow, it feels like I'm never going to have love. Okay. Those are still emotional sensations. What I'm talking about is a frequency of the actual curse itself, because we can feel those curses. They have energy. It's, it would be almost like this, Cynthia, when we have like a frequency in our body and we're going, this is not me. Like we might feel something like down our arm or maybe in our chest, it might feel like a heaviness or it might have a density, but it doesn't, it's not an emotional thing and it's not a discarnate. That could be a curse. Okay. So okay. we can, it's a, it can have physical sensation 
without emotion. It could be anywhere in the body. Sometimes people just feel like there's a cloud over them. And again, it's not that emotion. Like if, if we were connected to that, if it was like, if that cloud was part of our life stream and we had called that in, or we had had something happen to us that made us feel the need to protect ourselves, we would have an emotional component connected to that, even if it's from past lives, okay? Yeah, that but makes if it's a lot coming, of sense. Yeah, so if it's a curse, we're gonna feel the sensation of it. We're gonna feel it's foreign, it's not really me, but we're not gonna have that same emotional charge attachment that we have with all our other kinds of wounding, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So a really interesting question is, if a discarnate had a curse and they went into you, could you actually have that curse? Yes, because what happens when anybody's in your body, you take on their energy, whatever that is. So for example, let's just say that you, that someone came into your body and they're a smoker. You might all of a sudden find yourself either wanting to smoke or smoking, okay? So the other things too, people often have like illnesses, lung diseases, whatever, you will begin to have those, you will, you'll feel that and you'll begin to take that on and then you'll begin to manifest or you can manifest those very diseases, illnesses, emotional disturbances, curses of those entities that are in your body. Because when someone steps into the body, they're bringing everything with them and you're absorbing that in, in your whole energy field. So you're feeling that and taking that on. So yes, if you've got a, a discarnate that's been cursed, they come into your body. Yep. Now you're living their curse. Wow. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> We're definitely going <laughs> to yeah. be doing a podcast episode just on discarnates as well later, but right now we'll just focus more on the curses. So could you give us like an example of maybe someone you worked with where it, they were cursed and you lifted that and then it, things just changed completely. Maybe oh, yeah, a brief yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had many, 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 but, um, I remember, um, oh yeah. Okay. This is kind of cool. Um, the, there was someone, it was a female woman and she, she's one of the kind of people that's very heartfelt, very loving, kind, generous, um, kind of like a healer, psychic kind of person. And, and she just felt like she couldn't see things. She just felt like her sight was blocked. She felt like, um, again, that cloaking kind of cl uh, frequency, like cloudiness and her ability to, to really find sense energy was, was interfered with. So she had to struggle to, to be able to sense energy and, and really give information. And her life making money, like she struggled to make money, you know, like she was, she was really a good, he, good psychic, but um, you know, she just never, ne it never could take off. People would never come to her, you know, like that maybe someone would come, but it would never grow her. Nothing grew. Her practice didn't grow nothing. So in the unraveling of all that, when I was tracking back now, it came, this actually came from past lives. So it was quite a few, several lifetimes in back, and she had been in a covenant of witches, okay? And she did something, and she got cast out of that covenant. Well, all these witches got together, and they literally cursed her. You know, they wanted to, they wanted to really uh, mess, uh, uh, mess with her, block her, stop her, okay? So there was a lot of emotion in the cursing. So in the unraveling, of course, I have to connect with the souls who did this and show them the bigger picture, show them that the dance that we all do. So they understand that the, the experiences, it didn't begin here, that they've had many experiences together and they're playing all these experiences out. And then I show them the bigger picture. Then I make sure that they're willing to lift the curse. And if they're not, then I got to find out why and go deeper. But once I know, once that's cleared, then the curse begins to be lifted. Like they're, they're literally, the, the casting of this curse, the energy frequency that went around this woman, all those energies began to be extracted, pulled off and out and away from her. And I, I was watching the energy and literally, I'm like, remember, it looked like this cloudy cloak of energy over her, that began to be lifted. 
all of her energy begin to shift and change. Her, her third eye, I kind of opened, blew out the frequencies in that so that she could start to sense energy and, and, and then also lifting all the frequencies of that curse off and out of her body and release that completely. But I also released the beings who had cursed her and accelerated them. You know, I always like to give, give you know, helping people no matter who they are because people, it gets people get emotional. You know, that's what's up. That's what happens. And they get hurt and then they get angry. They hurt back. So everyone's doing their best and we got, all have these emotional issues. So help them. So once that happened, everything changed like almost immediately. Okay. All of a sudden she was, um, you know, her, her ability, her ability to see energies and track energies and sense energies was more open. Clients started coming, money started coming. I mean, this happened within, Almost that, I, I even that, I'm thinking that even that same day, all of a sudden she had a, a new client or something, you know what I mean? But it was like, now that that was completely gone, now she was free to open the energy up and be, she was available and people started coming and she started making money. Just, I mean, just like that it was just, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it was that simple, but curses can be so intense. They can mess you up. Like make serious. it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. that process you described, that's, is that the only way to release the curses is to do all the things that you mentioned? That's probably one of the best ways okay. you can also like, so if we're trying to do it ourselves again, when you have emotion, if you try to release a curse without releasing the people who did it without the people that cast it, you may or may not be successful, okay? But you can release your own curses. So when you wanna do it yourself, like if you feel a curse from this lifetime, you can, like someone's cast something on you earlier in your life and you know it, you, again, you wanna get a sense of where is it coming from because you also need to get a sense of what is it about, okay? Like how is it affecting you? And you will know that mostly by what you're experiencing. And you can start to unravel that. So what you're going to do is you're going to, oh, here's another piece that I need to mention. Everything, there's an agree at a soul level, we have agreements, okay? On the soul level, even in those past slides with that woman I was describing, there was an agreement to have this dance, okay? There's an agreement to know ourselves in all these different ways. So we want to release agreements and contracts. Simple, simple, put the white flame in front of you all agreements and contracts that you have with this being that's cursed you, now you're gonna ask for all those agreements and contracts to be lifted from your subconscious. You might sense them, feel them, know that it's happening. They can be sparks of light, words, templates, tablets, colors, energy frequencies, symbols, whatever. But you wanna make sure they're all out of your body. What you're doing with that is you're now nulling and voiding the agreement that allowed that curse to happen in the first place, okay? Once you do that, then you can call forth the person that cursed you in this, when we're talking about this lifetime, you, this also applies to past lives, okay? So you just, you, you, if you don't know who it is, the, the cursing is still connected to that being. So you can ask for that being who cursed you to be in front of you now, okay? And as you're releasing your agreements and contracts, you're also having the agreements and contracts with you released out of that person as well. And then once the agreements and contracts are now null and void, then there's no nothing to hold the curse, okay? So now you can either start just using light energy or spinning energy and, and just lifting the energy off, off your own body, or you can actually communicate with the soul that you ended the agreements with that, that have them start to pull the energy off and out of your own physical body on all levels of who you are, okay? And then once that's done, you help them and send them home into the light. Uh, and that's easy as well. It's like pulling in the light of home and you just show them the light and let them go. Now, if you wanna accelerate them into the new paradigm, then you gotta bring forth the energy frequency of the new paradigm in order to do that, okay? But once you got that frequency of the new paradigm, you can literally send them into that energy. And they'll go unless they're holding on to massive darkness, then they can't go into the new paradigm frequency. Okay, that's another topic, but 
uh, yeah, so they won't be, they wouldn't be able to go. But usually if they're light enough, they, you can help them accelerate into the new paradigm. Otherwise, just go into the light. Okay, so there are really a lot of components that you mentioned there, and you do teach this, right? You know, you have Awaken the Shaman coming up, and is yeah. that something that's taught is how to release curses? Can you tell us a little bit about that part of it? Yeah, the, okay, so the Shaman, the Awaken the Shaman is really about waking up your Shaman, okay? And the ability to not just sense energy in all the different ways we sense energy, but the biggest component of a shaman is the ability to track energy, the ability to move and clear and release and bring forth different energies. And so it's a major, major experience. And it's a very potent experience and very powerful position to be a shaman, to have the abilities to truly uh, move energy and, and track and, and clear energy. So yes, that's a very, very potent, powerful program. Yeah. All right. And is there anything else you want to add about the curses that we didn't touch upon? Yeah. So curses, um, I mean, they can come from all these different modalities. And sometimes we can call them spells. There can be spells cast upon you. There can be charms. There can be things like I was saying earlier about uh, voodoo or sorcery, witchcraft, um, black magic. All of those are really dark energies. Like if you've got something with black magic or voodoo, those are very intense. And I don't encourage people to try to unravel those themselves because oftentimes there are energies attached to that. When I mean when I say energies, I say conscious, sentient beings that are very dark and evil and harmful. And if you're not skilled at this, you can really get hurt. So, you know, I don't really encourage people to try to do this on their own unless they are skilled, especially if you're dealing with these darker energies, because it gets dangerous, really dangerous. It's not fun to mess around with. All right. And there is an upcoming clearing for Halloween that is for curses and hauntings. So if you're someone who is listening to this, you think you might have a curse. Um, if the things that Bonnie mentioned really resonate with you, then you might want to check out that clearing. It's going to be October. I don't, I don't know the exact date. <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming up, uh, one of the live group clearings. And of course, in those group clearings, you could ask Bonnie questions at the end of the actual energy clearing. And there is another one um, for curses in the that you did a few years ago that's available in the shop as well. So you can right. definitely check that out. I'll be adding those links to the description of this podcast. So if those of you who are listening, you want a direct link to those, I'll be putting them in the description. And next week, we're going to be talking about hauntings, and that should be a pretty fun one. I have one really cute story, and I know Bonnie has a, a incredible stories, so that's going to be really fun. <laughs> I'm oh, yeah, excited. The hauntings, those, those are very cool. Very cool. Yes, I'm looking forward to those. Yes. Okay, this concludes the first episode. I think this was great, and thank you so much, Bonnie, for sharing your wisdom and this will hopefully be a really uh, ongoing series with us. And maybe we'll have a guest, guests in the future, which would be pretty fun. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Cynthia. It's been fun Thank with you. you. All, right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.